Today I want to teach you that you need to be sure that you turn on the lights in your stories by grounding your characters in scenes. That is, writers make sure to show characters' actions as well as a place and time so that their readers don't have that disoriented feeling asking, wait, where is this? Or what's going on? We all know what makes up a scene. Take a minute. Pause the video and read through this old chart. When you're writing a scene, it's easy to get so caught up in the dialogue that you forget everything else that makes up a scene. The things that keep the reader grounded and knowing what's happening. Let me give you an example. One of the students from one of my classes a couple of years ago, Nick, wrote this. I was so embarrassed. I didn't know what to say. Um, just apologize, she said. I'm sorry, I said. You're forgiven. Let's go get a slice, she said. Some things work in this scene. Characters are talking. We can tell how they're feeling. But the characters are floating. The story produces the same feeling I had when I woke up in the middle of the night and I didn't know where I was. We can't tell where the characters are, and we're not sure what they are doing. We're disoriented. To make sure the lights are on for readers, it's essential to ensure the character is actually in a fully formed scene. In other words, the character will not only be talking, he's also thinking, feeling, and moving within the scene. In fact, those other things are so important that a scene can have all of those things and not have dialogue and still be a scene. Watch how Nick's draft became more clear and emotionally rich when he added action and setting. Nick didn't actually know what his characters were doing. When he wrote the draft, his characters were just talking. He hadn't envisioned the action, thoughts, feelings, or setting yet. So he decided to revise his draft to add those elements. He decided to make his characters walk home from school. It would be a crisp fall day. That way, one of the characters could do stuff with falling leaves and acorns, and the other character could be fiddling with his jacket. Nick expected these things to be fillers, really, to hold up the talk, but the actions ended up revealing the real story in a very important way. Listen to Nick's next draft, the one he wrote after thinking about where the characters were and what they were doing. I was so embarrassed. I didn't know what to say. Um, I kicked a pile of leaves that had gathered at the base of one of the trees on Brigham Street. My face felt like it was so hot it would melt. A breeze whooshed and leaves danced on the sidewalk. Just apologize, she said. She pulled her collar tighter and buttoned the top button. I snuck a glance at her face. She was biting her bottom lip. I knew it was hard for her to ask for an apology. An acorn fell off a tree and ricocheted off a car parked in the corner. The smell of tomato sauce and garlic wafted in the cool late October air. My stomach growled. I snuck another peek at her and now she was stomping every leaf on the sidewalk. Moving intentionally to them and then crushing them under her boots as she walked. My heart pounded. What if I apologized and she didn't forgive? What if I didn't and she never spoke to me again? I'm sorry, I said, moving intentionally to them and then crushing. Writers, do you see how the characters are not in the dark anymore? We can really picture them. We can see what they're doing and where they are. And you know what? When Nick wrote this, his only plan was to have the two of them walking home together. He chose to make it a fall day only because it was fall when he was writing a story. And he thought he could describe it well. Then, as he wrote the scene, adding in the actions and other things, stuff started happening between the characters that Nick never planned for at all. It just happened on the page. It surprised Nick that his main character was taking so long to apologize when his friend was clearly upset. And Nick was totally surprised when she started crushing leaves violently. There was a lot more feeling between them than Nick had realized. All this drama came out in the story, simply because Nick decided that he needed to get his characters out of the dark and to rewrite the story 
showing the characters as they moved and interacted in the setting. So let's try it. Let's read this section of our Esmeralda story. As I read the story, think to yourselves, will this make sense to the readers? Is it clear? If you come to a place in the story where the words seem to come out of the dark, a place where you suspect the readers might feel disoriented, hold on to that spot. So Esme, Mauve interrupted, she was looking at me, calling me a much cooler version of my name than I was used to. I couldn't help myself. I smiled. She had given me a cool nickname. It was almost like we were friends. My eyes left the spot on the carpet I had been staring at and looked at Mauve. Yeah, I said, in what I hoped was my coolest voice. Mauve leaned forward on the beanbag chair, her perfectly painted fingernails planted on her knees. You know Tilly better than anyone in this room. Why does she dress like that? Writers, could you picture what was going on? Did you see the place? So let's read on to the next part of the story. I mean, she never looks good, Mauve said. Worse than that, Liz jumped in. She looks like she doesn't even care. I wasn't sure what to say. Uh, well, I mean, look at you. Look at us. We clearly care. We look good, Liz said. I know you completely look like you should be hanging out with us, not with Tilly. Writers, I want you to think about how you would rewrite this by adding setting and actions. Pause the video and reread this part of the draft. Remember, we don't want readers to feel disoriented. How would you add setting and action so the reader doesn't feel in the dark? Writers, did you figure out where you would add setting and add actions? You might have, just like Nick, ended up surprising yourself and finding that things are happening between the characters that we didn't even realize when we first started this story. This is what writers do. Their revisions start out as corrections and end up as creations.